So it's, it's pretty wild to just you know, be in Palo Alto with a bunch of cubes and then a humanoid robot just w walks past. <laughs> um, we've made a, a massive amount of progress with Optimus in a short period of time from someone pretending to be a robot dancing in a suit uh, <laughs> to a, a pretty hodgepodgey robot to a robot that is actually doing useful tasks in the factory today. Um, so we have two Optimus robots in our Fremont factory that are doing basically this task, which is taking cells uh, off the end of the line and placing them in a shipping container. And um, yeah, we actually have quite a few of these cruising around our offices in, in Palo Alto. Uh, so there's, and, and I think we've got kind of like one major hardware revision which should be done by end of this year or early next, uh, before, and, and then we'll move into a limited production next year of Optimus. L limited production for use in our factories where we'll test out the product, kind of, you, know, uh, you know, as I say, sort of eat our own dog food or whatever the electronic equivalent of that is. Um, so, uh, but I, I think like next year, uh, my prediction is next year we'll have over a over a thousand, maybe a few thousand Optimus robots working at Tesla. So. And, and, and things are going to scale up very rapidly uh, from there. Uh, so we'll iron out the bugs. It'll, like the degree of autonomy will be um, radically better. You'll just literally be able to talk to it and say, please do this task, or I'm going to show you something. Now do that, the thing that I'm showing you. Um, and uh, you know, get to the point where it can watch a video of something like a person and, and then learn just by looking at that video and, and do that task. So yeah. Um, so really, it's going to be quite something. Um, and, and I'm confident of the pr prediction that there will be more, uh, like the ratio of humanoid robots to humans will be greater than one to one. Um, so that there'll be, you know, more than 10 billion humanoid robots in the world, um, probably 20 or more. And Tesla is going to be by far the leader in that. Um, you're, you're seeing a lot of uh, uh, robot startups. Um, and, but I think it's actually very challenging to, to do Optimus as a robot startup because what we found to make Optimus work, we've had to design, every, design from first principles, from scratch, uh, every part of the robot. So the motor, the gearbox, the sensors, uh, the power electronics, the communication system, everything had to be done from scratch. We, we found that there's basically nothing. There's no supply chain. So even though there are many electric motors made in the world, there's no supply chain for the types of motors and sensors and gearboxes that are needed for a humanoid robot. Um, and you, I mean, what you're seeing here is our current generation uh, hand and arm, but our next gen which has 11 degrees of freedom, our next generation has 22 degrees of freedom. Um, it will be able to play the piano. So it's, it's really like, wow. Um, now, of course, like I said, we need to make sure we don't have the Terminator scenario. That's very important. Um, so you know, safety of the human robot will be very important. Um, but because it requires so much uh, ground up design, designing every motor, gearbox, sensor, power electronics from scratch, it's, it's very hard for a startup to, if not impossible, for a startup to replicate that. But at Tesla, we have the world's best electrical engineering. We, uh, I think we've got the world's best mechanical engineering for, for gearboxes and, uh, and, and for um, you know, electric motors, power electronics. Uh, so uh, you know, we have the resources to do that. It, it, it applies quite well. Uh, and then you also have to have the, the brain. You need, the, the, you, need the, 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 you need a power efficient inference computer, um, which we've got for the car, and we'll be using an Optimus. Uh, you need AI, real, the, you need to be the best in real world AI, and Tesla's the best in real world AI. So you need all of these, you need a very strong hand of cards in order to um, make 
a compelling uh, robot. And then you, you also need to be very good at scale manufacturing. So in order to have the robot not cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars, in order to make it cost like you know, ten or twenty thousand dollars, you actually need to design for manufacturing and be very good at manufacturing. Um, and what, in my experience, prototypes are, are easy compared to volume manufacturing. Prototypes are easy, production is hard, um, relatively speaking. So Tesla has the production capability, it has the engineering capability, and it has the AI hardware and software capability. Um, and even the most optimistic estimates that I've seen for, for Optimus, <laughs> the Optimus optimist, um, <laughs> um, I think under, under count the magnitude of, of what this robot will be able to do. Um, you know, as I said at the beginning of the, of the presentation, I, you know, I agree with the ARK Invest analysis that uh, autonomous transport is called sort of a five to seven trillion dollar market cap situation. Optimus, I think, is, is a, a 25, a, literally $25 trillion market cap situation. So. Now, I don't, want to, I don't want to trivialize trivialize what's necessary to get there. I mean, it's an immense amount of work that is required to get there, like super difficult. Uh, but uh, we are moving very fast down that road. We're going to make it happen. So thank you.